Okay, so let me say some words about TE Academy's mission. Uh, token engineering is a super new discipline. It's about um, designing, verifying, optimizing crypto economic systems. And our goal is to develop this new engineering discipline to educate aspiring token engineers and grow the number of token engineers in crypto. So many projects are looking for token engineers and we'll train them. And of course, create new web free. <laughs> New value flows for education and research. I am sorry. We are going to just pause things for a moment here. Yeah. Uh, let's see if that works. Can you guys try sharing again? It should. I can see Peter's yeah. screens. Do you guys American. see it too? Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay, okay, cool. All right. And um, let's move on to the program. So this DAO reward systems program has started right. in November 21 and is running until February 2014, as mentioned. We've onboarded 41 community researchers in total with various backgrounds, ranging from computer science to um, engineering, data science, economics, um, uh, biology, international relations, Taoist people, so a good mix. And they are working in teams on uh, the three cases. Uh, the first phase of this program was um, Dao Rewards Data Analytics, and P Peter will share some more results here in a minute. And the second part was the Reward Systems Assemblage. This was a, a gathering, a one-day event with talks from um, 1KX, from investors, from DAO people, from people uh, in community building, discussing DAO rewards, highly recommended. Um, let me uh, drop a link to the playlist into the chat in a moment. And then the third phase currently going on, DAO reward systems, new mechanisms and self-defined research questions, final presentations, February 24th, as mentioned. And since we know that any reward system and any work in token engineering um, needs context, we worked on three cases. And Ocean DAO is one of the cases we are working on. We've been accessing and using data. Uh, we are building on the issues we have found uh, in Ocean DAO for the grant systems or the issues we, we find relevant. And um, Second case is Near DAO, and the third case is Token Engineering Commons. Ocean and Near with grant systems in place, and Token Engineering with a, a system that is called Praise, that is similar to Coordinate in rewarding individual contributors and contributions. All right, and now Peter will share some more of the results in data analytics. Hey everyone, um, yeah, so Angela, thanks for the intro. Um, and just as a quick reminder, so the data analytics part was part one of the program. So I think it was about six weeks from November to mid-December. Um, and the overall goal of the data analytics segment was to measure system health using raw reward systems data. Um, so we basically had a crash course in data analytics. Um, like Angela mentioned, there's people from all sorts of backgrounds, technical and non-technical. Um, so it's always a, an effort getting everyone on the same page and we rely on the teams a lot to, to support each other. Um, so anyways, the researchers and the teams um, through those six weeks followed a four step process for measuring system health. Uh, first was understanding system context. Um, second was creating hypotheses around uh, how to measure system health and then analyzing the data that we had from reward systems and finally coming to some conclusions. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to walk through a couple of the learnings, key learnings that we had from the data analytics process um, and give you an, all, an idea of what we uh, took out of this. So first learning is that uh, DAO data is very loaded and it takes a lot of time to unpack. Um, so DAOs are obviously complex human systems and when humans communicate and coordinate, uh, they leave behind really powerful uh, signals. And so it's really it's really exciting from a data analytics perspective because there's a lot to um, analyze and interpret and um, a lot of different directions that you could uh, take the data analysis process. Um, but it also means that it takes 
quite a while to actually unpack um, and contextualize this data uh, in to the point where you can start interpreting it. Um, so our, our teams obviously learned that from experience. Uh, we to, to tackle this, we um, started with a bunch of Miro mind mapping exercises. So we did a lot of brainstorming with the teams of how to like qualitatively um, map contributions, social, technical, slow, fast. Um, so this is the bottom left of the screen at the moment. Um, and also just brainstorming, like, what is the healthiness? What does healthiness of the ecosystem mean? What does healthiness of the individual mean? And how can we maybe uh, combine those to define system health? Um, the researchers in the program also did a lot of their own research. Uh, they created documentation libraries, dictionaries. They did interviews with community members. Um, this was especially true for the, the near teams, um, just given the the interesting history of the near ecosystem and the size of it. Um, so this was just a screenshot from the Miro board um, of all of the mapping that they did to get the context, full context of the system. Um, and I think it was also a lot of work for the ocean teams. Uh, and yeah, the learning, second learning that we had, uh, big takeaway is that reward systems are actually a subsystem um, of the overall uh, DAO or ecosystem. Um, so I mentioned we started with the goal of measuring system health. Um, and as we started going down that path, we got all the system context. And when we finally got to the analysis step, a lot of teams noticed that there was some misalignment between the target question measuring system health and some of the available data that we had. Um, the data, as I mentioned, is uh, focused on the reward systems uh, themselves. And so in response to that, um, we, I guess, learned that the reward systems are the subsystem and some teams uh, ultimately ended up narrowing down their goals or the, the questions that they were trying to answer to be more uh, reward systems related, which is uh, great learning. So um, these are just a few examples of the metrics and analysis that then um, came out of analyzing that question. So teams would dive into the reward systems data um, and worked on uh, metrics like the recurring voter ratio, uh, these two examples are actually pulled from Ocean as well. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, so recurring voter ratio, uh, calculating the number of recurring voters versus total voters um, throughout all 11, I think we had data through uh, 11 rounds. Um, and another example analysis is this voting diversity metric. Um, so the number of unique projects per voter. Uh, and this one's kind of interesting. So breaking down the size of a voter from small fish, rather than just uh, whales and non-whales, they went with small fish, seals, and whales, um, and just uh, looked at the diversity. So how many unique projects um, each voter would uh, ultimately vote for uh, across all the rounds. So um, a lot of data points to calculate and teams have, I mean, lists of like 20 or 30 data points, not all of them. Uh, they didn't get to all of them, but it was really interesting to the, the output um, on a lot of these. So credit to the ocean teams there. Um, and then just staying on this point actually um, about the subsist reward systems being a subsystem, uh, some teams actually did stick with the system level analysis, uh, which was really interesting to see them try and complete this process um, because they ultimately noted a lot of challenges with data availability. Um, so while they ran into these challenges, um, it was really cool to just see the contrast in uh, teams that continue to try and measure the whole system um, and and measure system health, and then the teams that kind of narrowed to the reward system. Um, and so this is an example of one of the teams that tried to stick with measuring system health uh, and looking at, again, looking at the ocean ecosystem. Um, and so they split system health into a function of four Subfunctions: uh, internal contributors, external ecosystem, financial, and governance. Um, and then those four functions into their own functions um, with different variables. And as you can tell, the governance function was really the only one that we um, ended up having data for with reward systems data. So, um, so this was just uh, kind of an example of how we still spent some time or some of the teams still spent time to review the entire system, um, but ran into some issues with data availability. 
Um, and then finally, learning number three is the challenge of metric subjectivity. Um, so Goodhart's law is a really good, clear um, explanation of this, is that when a metric or when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. Um, we had an idea this would become uh, or this would be a challenge uh, we'd face in, in the program just because um, data analytics can be subjective in general. Um, but the good example that we uh, were or the a good example of how this came to be in um, in practice uh, is on the praise ecosystem. So the third case partner that we were working with, or the third reward system we were working with, um, and one of our teams actually uh, created a survey and sent it around to the token engineering commons community and asked them about their own feeling of uh, the compensation they received through the praise reward system. Um, and the outcome of the survey results was that about 30% of respondents actually thought the praise that they received wasn't quite consistent with the effort they put in. Um, and it's really just an interesting um, uh, yeah, example of how praise kind of becomes, the, it, praise becomes the measurement of contributions, but as soon as it becomes the measurement, it might not actually be a good way to measure um, the contributions that uh, participants are making. And obviously there's um, improvements that can be made um, and uh, always room to grow for these reward systems. So it's clear that they're facing some challenges um, at this point, but, and the data analytics uh, segment of the program uh, did show that. And I think our teams overall learned a lot, um, but that brings us to the opportunity of uh, actually innovating on these reward systems. Um, which and creating new mechanisms, which is what Angela will now talk about. So I'll hand it off to you to take the section, Angela. Okay, how much that? time is left, Roberto? You're getting close. Uh, that's okay. I, okay. I, we do have a couple of teams, but uh, okay. I would right. say keep going. Right. Keep going. I'll be quick. So this is work in progress. Again, uh, teams will finish until February 24th. I just wanted to show some of the example of new mechanisms. And here's um, just a review um, of various grant systems. And I guess this might feel familiar. So uh, at the top um, layer, at the top, you see um, a, a standard process from budgeting uh, a certain a funding pool, be it in grants or uh, for other contributions, then ask for funding, deliver, track the results, evaluate the results and accept and uh, distribute rewards in the uh, blue boxes are the activities by grantees and the yellow boxes are by DAO members. And if we look at uh, current DAO systems, we have many blind spots or gaps, right, where we have, for example, a budgeting and, and ask step, but nothing to track delivery. And then having uncertainty on acceptance criteria, still delivering uh, and distributing rewards and track it uh, and track delivery only afterwards. Or we have only ask and distribute rewards. I mean, this is early stage of DAOs, of course, but mm, maybe this is problematic. And uh, or um, missing budgeting, just open-ended distribution of tokens, or problems in uh, fair and equal evaluation. We have token volatility, so um, these are all aspects that we have to take into account when improving uh, reward systems. And let me now show you, just give you three examples. The first example I'd like to share is CoFund. Um, you might have heard about this project. It's developed by Davide, and he's pretty active in Ocean Dow as well. He won Hackathon Prize and is currently working on the CatCat model for this um, idea. The problem CoFund addresses is you have usually upfront and lump sum payments in grant systems and uncertainty about the three teams' trustworthiness, skills, project outcome. And next slide. Um, this uncertainty leads to many grant systems being limited to four uh, small funds, uh, small amounts, and doable projects. And then project teams suffer from the uncertainty about receiving enough funds for sustainable work. And CoFund, the uh, vision of CoFund is to have continuous payments and a multi-step evaluation. 
And the question he's aiming to answer is how the funds streaming by modeling this, and this is the core token engineering step here, is by modeling this, see how the fund streaming would affect and ideally reduce the risk due to volatility of token allocation. This is some of the questions he tries to answer here. And uh, CoFund is also an interesting project to explore overall. Next slide is a different team on common, common. Uh, is an impact rewards model. And the interesting aspect here is, the question is, what if we reward projects that turn out to be impactful for the DAO retrospectively? Um, and usually the intuitive first step always is, okay, how can we measure impact? And then you run in a deep rabbit hole of how to measure impact. impact. Instead, this team took a different approach and this is really core engineering work, they ask, what if we reward projects that turn out to be impactful retrospectively, and, but first, how to, do we have to design this mechanism to make it sustainable? So if we hand out impact rewards, how can we make, um, create a sustainability loop that makes it sustainable and not just distributing, handing out rewards? And only if this is sustainable, if we can shape a mechanism uh, that is suitable, then we start working on measuring impact. And they are using parameters like the number of projects, the amount of funds for impact rewards versus the amount uh, of funds available and explore when this could break or hopefully not break. And next slide. Um, in simple systems, this might be a spreadsheet calculation, and but in more complex systems, you have various feedback loops like the number of projects that are attracted by impactful projects and turn out to be more impactful projects, so like, like these network effect of impactful projects, uh, or the additional funds inflow attracted by impactful projects. So here you can see this in this diagram, near funding increase. So there is a certain aspect in near uh, that attracts additional funding from outside, not just distributing the, the core DAO funds. And the model they've created helps to understand the parameter affecting the system. And this is a note at the lower area proves that there is an equilibrium state with more impactful projects than unimpactful projects, even if you start at a state where you have initially more unimpactful projects. And these models are just helpful for any grant systems to just explore, okay, how can we shape mechanisms like this? How can we make it sustainable? And then provides also information on how to measure impact. All right, let me show a final example, DAOs to NFT. This is um, increasing the DAO health using, using a reputation NFT. The aim is to increase um, trustworthiness, reputation of grantees. Uh, the assumption is an ecosystem will grow when stakeholders have trust in value contributors. And value contributors, of course, can be projects receiving a grant or, of course, also investors who might be able to stake on high performance projects, um, ambassadors, state consumers, suppliers, market makers, data unions. And the projects so this is a, a this is a, a diagram, um, a loopy diagram with with um, the positive and negative feedback loops. This is one of the tools we use in the process. Projects that receive grants from the DAO can earn reputation NFTs, and these NFTs are minted when funded. Um, when a funded project is progressing, is delivering on milestones, and finishing in in time, reaching ROI. And in subsequent grant rounds, these NFTs signal voters to trust certain projects and team members. And of course, there are many more opportunities to use this, like for waiting, um, for distribution mechanisms and whatnot. And if we go to the next slide, um, here the team is currently working on, a policy, on the policy functions, like how does a delay in delivery affect an NFT mint or can reputation decay over time due to missing activity? Or also important, assigning reputation from teams and team achievements 
down to individual contributors or vice versa, aggregating reputation from individuals to teams. And additionally, the model uses project weights derived from the number of yes votes accumulated so far. So really interesting, sophisticated mechanisms and policies to be implemented in such a model. And um, here's in, on the next slide, uh, this is assigning reputation from team achievements. This is just first approach, uh, this bipartite graph uh, and aggregating um, reputation from individuals to team as well as having reputation levels, you know, uh, on the right side, starting as a shrimp and growing to oysters and dolphins. And um, so, by the way, index, our uh, index co-op has some really nice um, aspects in these levels. Um, this is, was just the first overview, just an appetizer on the results uh, we'll have in the final presentations before I move on and share the Google link. I guess, Henrik, you wanted to add something for DAO to NFT, a call to action for Ocean DAO. Yeah, no, it, it was basically I'm, I'm part of, the, of, of this uh, DAO to NFT uh, conversation and uh, we, uh, we're struggling a little bit with validating if this is a uh, ballpark okay. So if there's anybody who's really good in, in Ocean DAO's way of thinking, um, it would be really great to have your uh, validation effort, like, you know, in traditional design science research or traditional you know, DAO context. Um, if you if you're willing to um, to 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 give us some uh, brainstorm thinking, then we have a weekly meeting uh, Fridays uh, 0800 CET. Um, and actually, since our deadline is February 24th, if if somebody who's uh, who's who, who who has an opinion about this would join us, that would be really helpful. Uh, this Friday, um, actually, what's that on February 4th? Um, 0800 uh, CET, so that's um, in the morning Europe time. Um, just to validate if this is ballpark okay, because we feel like we're doing a lot of stuff which is sort of like very academic ish. Um, and it would be very nice to have a validation to, uh, to see if this is actually applicable rather than just a, a, a fun academic exercise with Angela's TE Academy, which is great, by the way. Join. Uh, I was just going to ask if this event is currently inside of the tech uh, calendar. Yes, we have it. Yes, we have it. Um, I'll share the link also in this call. So, Peter, okay, if can I just, if, if, if you want to join, I, I'm the one that's called Haxalax in those slides. Haxalax uh, hash 8585, uh, Friday morning 0800 CET. Please join and uh, we'll walk you through the loopy and the code and show you the simulations. And then we want to ask you, is this really meaningful in a real life context? We're very clever people and we expect you to be even more clever. Uh, I was just going to highlight that the ambassadors right now have been wanting to implement something that is reputation based. So uh, I think it'd be really interesting if uh, some of them who are leading this initiative uh, would perhaps uh, join the conversation. Um, and this is very interesting. I, I love all things DAO. I, I don't know what my schedule looks like, but uh, again, I would just love to really support all of the research and awesome developments that are going on by the tech and all the groups around it because it is uh, very uh, at the edge of, of, of what's happening. So yeah, thank you. Um, Henrik, um, I'll guide you to the parameters channel. I guess we should make sure to post it in the Ocean DAO and Parameters and maybe Ambassadors channel as well. Okay. Great, Robin, thanks. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, final note, this is the calendar invite for the DAO Reward Systems final presentation. So um, you are warmly invited to join us February 24th at 4, 5 p.m. UTC. And last note, T Academy is going to launch the first comprehensive token engineering bachelor level course in 2022. So if you are interested in becoming a token engineer, if you know people who might be interested, make sure to direct them to our channels. We have an AMA session, the first one. There will be more pretty much every month um, on February 4th, this Friday, 4 p.m. UTC. Here's the calendar link as well and you can go to tokenengineering.org to learn more and stay up to date with TE fundamentals.
that's it from outside. Thanks for having us, Roberto. Um.